Okay, so for this portion, I'm going to show you how I actually get the wood grain look. You can see I already did the bottom here. You can do that first or you can do it last. But for this example, I'm just going to show you along the side of the cup because it's easier. So taking one of your alcohol inks, you're just going to squirt out a line of the ink and kind of just let it soak and bleed down into the cup. And using a paper towel or a rag, just wipe the excess ink away. And that's pretty much it. But what you can do here is mix the different colors of browns to create more dimension into the wood grain cup. Or you can stick with one color, which you can kind of see here, I start out with more of a reddish tone and then kind of start to stick with the darker brown tones with the cup. And you'll continue doing this process until you get all the way around the cup. But you can see here it's similar to adding layers that bleed and blend together, and when they overlap, it creates the grains of the actual wood or the wood look on the cup. And I just love making these kind of cups. They are so much fun to do, they are so easy, and they are truly unique and turn out very beautiful, just like a piece of wood would.
Okay, so once you get to this point in the process, you can see I have the cup on the turner. My clear coat is dry, and I actually have a four cup turner that my husband built for me, and he put some switches on it so that I could turn them all on at once or one at a time. You certainly do not have to have a turner like this. You can actually build just a single cup turner there are several tutorials out there. If you guys would like to see a tutorial, just let me know. Or you can actually buy one from Michael's Craft Stores. They actually sell a manufactured cup turner, which I will link down below. So for the epoxy part, you are going to want to mix two parts epoxy. I use Pro Marine Epoxy, and this is part A that I am pouring in to one of those little medicine cups. I actually fill this up all the way to the 30 millimeter line for both part A and part B. It is very important that you get exact amounts of part A and part E part B for this process, otherwise the epoxy will not secure and harden like you want it to. You might end up with a sticky or tacky result. So make sure that you double check your measurements. And here again, I'm just pouring part B into my second cup. Now these two medicine cups, what I'm going to be doing next is pouring them into the larger plastic cup that you see on my table. This is how I actually mix my epoxy. Some people do their methods differently where they pour it into one um, and then put the part B just on top. I don't do that. I measure each part A and B and then once I'm sure about my amounts, I go ahead and pour it into the cup. I've done this several times, so you might want to double check and make sure that your epoxy is poured right to the line, but I've done it enough to know how the feel of the epoxy is as I pour it out of the container. So here I'm just putting in part B. Part B is actually a thinner part of the epoxy, so I find it easier to pour first, and then pour A on top of it, which is a little bit thicker consistency, as you can see here. And I always scrape out every bit of the epoxy I can from the medicine cups using a larger popsicle stick, wiping all of the excess of the epoxy down into the cup. From this point on, I take that same popsicle stick as my stirrer and mix the epoxy for approximately two to three minutes, trying to get out all the air bubbles I can, making sure that the epoxy is completely mixed. So I scrape the edges and then start. And you can see as the epoxy starts to blend together, it has this like foggy cloud consistency, which is completely normal. Once it turns clear, it is ready to go. Okay, so at this point I have mixed the epoxy for about two minutes and it's pretty much clear. Just before I actually put it on the cup, I like to take my heat gun and turn it on the lowest heat setting and put it down into the cup just to pop any remaining air bubbles that there is. And then I give it a few more stirs. It doesn't get all the bubbles, but warming up the epoxy just a tad bit does help for it to kind of gel a little bit better together, at least in my experience. So this is the method that I do. Once that's done, it is time to then apply the epoxy to the cup. So right here, you can't really see it on camera, but I'm just removing my popsicle stick from the cup and I am actually going to be getting out a foam brush to apply the epoxy to the cup. Using a foam brush, I'm gonna work in a downward motion on my cup, and I am going to turn my cup turner on to where it is actually turning to the right. Um, this is just the way I like to do it. I like to go a downward motion, 
working my way to the left as the cup turns to the right. For me, I feel like this is the best way to apply the epoxy to the cup to make it as even and as smooth as possible. Some people say it doesn't matter how your cup turns, but because I work with my cups on the turner straight up and down, this is the method that works the best for me. So like I said, the cup rotates to the right and then I apply the epoxy downward while I move towards the left. And I will do this motion until the entire cup is completely coated with a thin layer of epoxy. And you can see that here. Now other epoxy methods might show where the cup turner is turned sideways and they have to work in a left to right motion. Um, you can certainly do that, but this is how I have my setup. So this is the way that I work in applying the epoxy. Another thing that I wanna point out here is that I have switches set up on my turner and I can actually dictate which way the cup turns. So if I turn it on, it will turn to the right and I can turn it off and back on again. It will actually flip to turning into a left motion. And so that's just one thing I wanna point out. I don't know if the Michaels Cup Spinner Turner actually has this feature. I don't know if other epoxy cup makers have this feature, but I just wanna point that out that I actually had it set up to actually turn left or right depending on which switch I turn on to actually turn my cup. Okay, so at this point I've pretty much layered the entire cup and you can see how the grain's gotten a little bit darker. I take the heat gun and kind of just zap and move it slowly um, in a motion and I know I've sped up the camera here so it actually looks like I'm moving pretty fast. But I do kind of take the uh, heat gun and apply some heat to pop any air bubbles that might have occurred while I was applying the epoxy. And then once I have that thin layer set, I let this turn for six to eight hours, uh, just depending on the cup, and it lets the epoxy completely dry and fully cur to the cup. So I will come back and show you what it looks like once it's completely dry. Okay guys, hi, I am back. I've turned my camera around. This setup behind me is actually where I make my cups. I have a little designated corner in my garage for making these glitter tumblers or the wood grain tumbler that I am showing you today. So if you want to see more tutorials of this, I am happy to show them to you. But I thought that I would just do the camera at this angle to kind of show you how I kind of have it set up. Obviously, if it's your first time making a cup, you're not going to have everything that I have in the background. But um, I just kind of thought that I would show you and share with you my little work spot. And I do apologize for the light, and my hair is a mess today, but I apologize. The light is a little bad, but this is just a little corner in my garage, and my husband built this tumbler for me. So if you want a tutorial on that, um, I can totally... Um, give you one of those. They actually now manufacture and make a tumbler for making these cups and you can get those from Michael's Craft Stores. I'm not sure how good they are. I've kind of heard mixed reviews um, on them but I'll put a link down below in this video telling you and showing you um, the actual tumbler and where you can get that. So this part of the video, we've already done the first layer of epoxy, which you've seen in the video. So we're gonna come back and finish this cup off. So you can see now that it's all dry. It is um, not perfect. And so for me, like not a lot of them come out perfect. Let me get this right in the camera. You can see like kind of like right here, you see how there's like a few little bubbles to the epoxy layer. So this is the first layer and it's gonna, it's fine if this happens to you, you can um, take care of this. And so I'm gonna explain how you can do that. The first way is by just using some sandpaper and I have um, 
some old sandpaper here, guys. I think it is 320 grit, so you can get a fine grit or you can get a rougher grit. This is a 220. I usually use this kind on my glitter cups. But for the wood grain, because it is just ink and epoxy that we did on this one, I'm gonna start with the softer one just to kind of see. And the, you're not gonna ruin it, so don't be afraid to sand. But you can see here how, well, let me do a little bit more just so you can see on um, camera here. Can you see that? See how it kind of like takes the shine off? All right, so I'm not gonna be afraid to use the thicker grit here, just so I can show you on camera. But what you're gonna do, and I just put the thick grit on a block here, is you're gonna sand it down. Now remember when you were a kid and you went outside, you got some leaves from I don't know, the play area, and then you brought them back inside, you got a sheet of paper, you laid the paper on top of your leaves, and then you took a crown and you colored over the leaf, and you could see the leaf through the paper design. Well, this is the same concept. When you sand it, you can see where all the little bubble areas are. See that? On your cup. Now you're like, oh no, she's ruined that. I have it. Once you do the epoxy, on this for your second coat, it's going to take all of that nice dust and chalk away. So I've just done just the bottom portion here, and I just did a light little coat, guys. Not a lot, but when I feel it, it's smooth. Smooth like a baby's bottom right here on the bottom portion. You can see where the bubbles were, but it is actually smooth to the touch. So now I just need to do the upper portion. Now on these wood grain cups, I recommend that you do go with your wood grain, right? Just like you would for real wood. Make sure that you sand up and down to the wood grain. Don't go left to right because in that one instance that you actually get a scratch, if you did it too hard, you don't want it to be going the wrong direction. If you get a scratch going in the same direction as your wood grain, you're not gonna notice it. So that is one thing that I wanted to share with you, okay? So now, I've done that, I'm just looking at it. When I get it all sanded, I kind of just run my hand on it and I feel, oh, there's a little bump right there. And it's not bad, right? It's like a little blemish. Sand it out, that's all you need to do. Buff it down, right guys? It's super easy. So I'm just working on this cup, and I know I'm doing it for the video here. And I usually come out here like right before I'm ready to get a shower. That's why my hair looks like poop. <laughs> right now it doesn't look very great. It's kind of dirty, but hey, whatever. It's crafting and it's fine. <laughs> right, okay, so here we go. I think, and I usually wear an old t-shirt. This is actually a shirt you can get in my shop, but Girl Boston ain't easy. You guys, I wear these all the time when I'm making stuff for people in their order. So, there we go. Ooh, I've got this one pretty much sanded all the way down. Really easy there. And now it's pretty smooth to the touch. I still feel like a little bit of a lip right in that area and it might be just where the epoxy was but see now it's all like sanded and dusty and on these cups you really don't need a lot of sanding sometimes on your glitter cups which I can put a tutorial for a glitter a glitter cup next sometimes on those cups you do need a lot of sanding a lot of work so you've got to definitely um, be prepared for that okay so the next step for this is I have an old rag out here, an old rag t-shirt that I've cut up into like little scraps out here. I just keep it in the garage. Every now and then I toss it out and get a new one. And I just use some regular alcohol and I squirt it into the rag. See that? And I give my cup a bath. I do this on all of my cups. I give it a nice, bath and look all of that dust goes away and now this cup is super smooth and it's ready for decals and ready for its final coat of epoxy 
So I just love this part of it because it just reveals it. Now I'm gonna keep wiping it with my alcohol here. And you can see like as the alcohol dries, it starts to get a little chalky again. But don't worry about it. The epoxy is gonna shine it right up, okay? So I am going to turn the camera around. I'm gonna put it on the tumbler or I'm gonna show you how I put my decals on here and what I've chosen for this cup, okay? So I'll be right back with the camera flipped. Okay, I am back with this um, camera flipped around. I apologize, the lighting is kind of bad, guys. Let me see if I can get my lights to shine a little better here for you. Um, okay, so I've sanded it and then I've given it an alcohol bath. You can see still some of the ripples in there, but when I touch it, it is actually very smooth. So don't worry about that. Now, to decorate the cup, you can do this a lot of ways. If you own a Cricut or Silhouette machine, you can cut any decal that you want. And there's also a process out there called water slide, which I'm not gonna go over in this video. But you can cut any decal that you want to put on here. If you don't have a Cricut or Silhouette machine, since this is the first tutorial that I'm putting up, I'm just showing you an option that you can do for putting decals or decorating your cup if you don't own an actual Cricut or cutting machine. But most people who do glitter cups actually own a vinyl decal cutting machine. So, um, to give you an idea of something that you don't, if you don't have, I actually found these flower stickers. They are stickers from the Dollar Tree on a long sheet. Um, and they came with like some crystals on them. Like it's a huge decal that you could make into a sign or some kind of artwork. Well, I just picked out the flowers that I liked and thought that they went really well with this wood grain cup. I kind of wanted to make the wood grain a little bit more feminine. Usually when you make the wood grain cups, it's for men or boys. And I just thought, you know what? Let's make this one girly. So I found these beautiful fall looking flowers. They have some really great detail in them and they're just decals from the Dollar Tree. So you can use decals um, that you find already made. And if you have a Cricut or Silhouette cutting machine, then obviously you can make something custom, which is kind of what I did here. I just did my name. And we're gonna make this cute little coffee fall floral wood grain type cup. I just thought it'd be perfect um, since we're headed into fall at the time that I'm making this video. So this one has a logo on it. I don't really necessarily care for the logos. So I usually make that logo part the back of my cup. And how I'm going to do that is, I'm just gonna lay down the cup here and figure out where I want to put these decals. Now see, you can see it just comes right off. It's just a flower decal that I found at the Dollar Tree. Okay, so I think I'm going to put my name back here in the upper third area. So I'm gonna do my custom part first and then I'll add the flower decals all around it. So I just, I kind of eyeball this every time, but you can measure if you want to. I think I'm gonna go right about here in the upper third area. Place the decal on like that. And it looks really good. So once I get it rubbed on really good, I just peel my transfer tape right off and look at that. Oh, I love the way that that looks all in itself by itself, but it could use some extra little decal. Oh, sorry, I shook my camera. It could use some extra here. So I think I want part of the flower design kind of coming in around my name there. So I might kind of see how that looks and then maybe this one what do you guys think kind of like it like that and then i might have room for one more i'm not sure let's see if i change it so this is what i kind of do i just kind of play around with the decals and see how they might look so i'm going to do that now and get them loaded onto the cup and i'll be right back okay guys
Okay guys, so I'm back. I've put my flowers on and you can see as I turn the cup in my hand, they kind of just continuously go around the cup. So I think this is gonna turn out really beautiful and I'm really excited to see how it turns out. Now, I do wanna note if you're watching this video and this is like one of the first tutorials that you've done for a cup, this is my first time actually using these Dollar Tree decals. So with you, I'm gonna see how they actually turn out. I did notice as I was putting them on, they are a little bit thicker than um, something I have used before. So um, we will see how it works. So I'm just gonna go ahead and load it onto my spinner or my turner, whatever you wanna call it. And make sure that it's on there nice and tight. And I'll see if I can get the camera to back up just a little bit here. And now I'm gonna mix my second layer of epoxy, which is just like I did in the first video. And I'm gonna do that now. Um, I usually do my gloves, just like last time. And one part A and one part B. I'm gonna do that and get that loaded up onto my cup turner and I'll come back with a video and just show you how it looks as it's spinning.